The year is 2021. Let's go. The world was still reeling over many catastrophic events that would plague this great nation. What the f is that? We were still stuck at home figuring out what we were going to do with our lives. And I was working at a Best Buy trying to do a return for a customer's TV with a hole inside of it. Yes, that actually happened. More on that story, never. So I was scrolling through YouTube as I do until something popped up on the old recommended. Nah, it's not that. But it's this. Learning with Pivi. I've probably watched this video over a million times at this point. Not hyperbole either, I'm serious. And I'm just amazed at this because at first I thought this was going to be a show. To my surprise and eventual dismay, it isn't. It's just a proof of concept that was put out there. Let me tell you, this video blew up. It's the GOAT! THE GOAT! <laughs> and for great reason as well, because it's insane. This video came out of nowhere, just materialized into the ether and, and grabbed the world by storm. Of course, it had your boy by the throat. I just thought the overall idea of it is genius, and the animation was solid, and the views started flooding in for it. It's genuinely an amazing sight to see. The importance of learning with Pibby is something that really shouldn't be understated. We're in a time where nostalgia is being pimped. Everything you've grown up with is coming back in one way, shape, or form. Whether it be really good showings of great content, it's beautiful, or some not so much. Either way, your favorites are coming back, whether you like them or not. But learning with Pippi puts a nice spin on it. So the old cartoons, as we all know and love, are being corrupted, and it's up to Pippi and friends to be able to stop it. This right here is fantastic, and I'll tell you what. Learning with Pivi serves as a celebration of Carson Emmerich over the span of several decades, but it's in a matter where it's respectful. It's not a thing where it tries to bring down the old or build the new, it's letting everything coexist while also ushering in the new in a very unique way, which I very much appreciate. It also showed that there was blood in this, so it's looking like it could snag that TV-14 rating if they ever wanted to pursue a show. Once I saw blood in the concept, my mind went to several places. Seeing as Pibby is allowed to fight in this kind of manner, I always thought it'd be cool and could open up for some interesting fights between certain characters. For example, if she went against the Powerpuff Girls with no restraints, because we've seen how nasty the Powerpuff Girls can get in fights. What? Oh. Huh? Oh, what? You going for something? You going for that? Mm, no. You want some more, man? Oh, I want one. You do? No. Yeah? No. But in a setting where the rating is higher, they're allowed to get it with a more violent showing. I think that would have been amazing to see personally. Just this knockdown, drag out fight with the girls against Pibby and her gang, just all bloodied up. Maybe it's just my anime adult brain talking, but it being centered around these big climactic battles with Cartoon Network's finest would make for some compelling television if I do say so myself. It also has some hints of horror elements alongside it as well, because the imagery you hear is very unsettling, and that helps sell the corruption of our favorite characters. Like, look at my man Finn here just foaming out the mouth. Fiend. Now, I don't think they'll lean heavily into that, but it's just one of those things where it's there to try and disturb you. It's not going to be this mega creepypasta show that Twitter desperately wants it to be, nor do I think the intention is that it's going for that, but it's kind of what some fans have given it as some sort of status for the concept. I understand why something like this blew up the way that it did, especially with Gen Z. We got a number one victory royale. Pippi's going to hit that very young demographic that isn't as familiar with older content, but because this whole corruption angle is within the concept, that's going to be a goldmine for them. I brought up the creepypasta deal, and this show hits exactly that mark. We've all seen the Tom Fuller coming out of that for cartoons over the years. That shit stinks! But learning with Pippi's using the creepypasta angle is more of an homage to it more than it is the focal selling point that some of the fans have essentially bastardized it to be. And that wasn't my initial interest in it. Something this overly ambitious is very commendable if handled the right way. Pretty as it stands right now is the golden child of the internet. I mean with 34 million views, I would assume that would lend you that status. So, expectations at an all-time high. It's such a dedicated fan base that has made the concept a lot bigger than what it was, and I don't think anyone could have anticipated that. Speaking of things people won't anticipate, let me let me let, let me throw something at you guys real quick. You guys remember that little game called Multiverses? <laughs> You know, the one that was hot for a couple months till it killed itself and is supposedly coming out in 2024? Yeah, you remember that. So learning with Pivi is dealing with the multiverse, right? She's traveling to vastly different worlds inside of her own and has to combat whatever force is corrupting the Cartoon Network Legends. Alright, you guys are with me. Cool. Learning with Pivi is already insanely ambitious with such a concept that it is and the IPs that it has alongside it. Ed Ed, Nettie, Adventure Time, Scooby-Doo, The Flintstones, you have some juggernauts of animation here. If I'm a higher up at WB and I'm seeing this reaction on the internet, I'm gonna maximize the fuck out of this thing. I'm gonna attempt to make some calls to WB Games Department and hope that player first games can add the character into the game. No one cares even remotely for multiverses anymore. 
the fuck is this piece of shit? But people care a lot for Pivy. To try and wean over that interest, I'd work her into the game. You already have the foundation is lying there, a fighting game with several different WBIPs. She's already fighting against him to prove a concept. The game is essentially tailor-made for this character. Hell, you can even base a story mode around her. You're going to have a Kirby World of Light scenario from Smash Ultimate and that's your ticket into having the character in the game. Having Pity be the main character in the story mode of your game is scrounging up characters to combat the other characters. Maybe that's just the businessman lurking in my soul talking, but something that the thousand percent can be done, but I don't see anyone in those positions willing to do that. I mean, hell, learning that Pippi is even greenlit. More on that later. Now, do I think Pippi can retroactively save that game? No. That'd be grossly overselling the capabilities of something off of a concept alone, but it would definitely get people talking about multiverses again, and that number would rise more and more because the game is something people care about now. And having some people care is better than having no one care. But this just speaks to the range that Learning of Pippi has. I always ran that through my mind of the possibility of her being in the game. Now, I knew it would never happen, not by a long shot, but just me messing around with a friend thinking that it would be really funny and cool for her to pop up in there, seeing as it actually makes sense when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Back to the general interest of Pippi though. I think it's ridiculous Pippi just is overlooked on this. Multiverse storytelling is at an all time high in the space of storytelling right now. That's not me saying that the stories have all been good though, because they haven't. That shit is fucking trash, dog. But the ones that shine, shine above the rest. And because it's popular at the moment, it would strike at the most opportune time. Pippi is being kept alive for the foreseeable future due to the fan engagement, but there's such an important thing to factor in. There's money in a concept like this, and it's actually stupidly easy how profitable a thing like this is. For anyone that doesn't know what's going on in Cards Network at the moment, but they have this program called Checkered Pass. Now Checkered Pass is a program that runs on Adult Swim for 2 hours at 5pm EST to 7pm EST, and at the time of this recording, the shows in that block are Dexter's Lab, Ed Ed Nettie, The Game Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and to end it off, Courage the Cowardly Love. Banger. After banger! After banger! This move has been doing Cards in the Rank wonders. Why? Because nostalgia, baby. With the press release from Warner Brothers Discovery revealed that it's been a huge hit with its intended audience in the ratings as it delivered with a 102% ratings increase among adults 25 to 54. With a 106% ratings increase among adults 18 to 49 over the prior six weeks of Cards in the Rank programming, this should come as a shock to absolutely no one. It's a hit with the people that grew up with the content like your boy, and it's a hit with people that missed that cutoff of content or just began to experience Cartoon Network in the 2010s versus the absolute peak of its career with the late 90s and the majority of the 2000s. If people got greenlit today with Checkered Pass going on at the moment, it'd be beautiful timing. You'd have both target demos for this concept and that's gonna garner more interest with Pibby seeing as the content they're crossing over with is currently airing on cable as we speak. Everyone gets to experience this in real time. It was a genius idea for their April Fool's joke Pibby to invade several different shows that are going on at the moment. It's something that has so much to offer and WB knows this or at least has to know this. I don't know how much more fan outcry has to happen before it gets brought to fruition, but now more than ever is a great time to roll it out. There was some art that came up with Pibby creator Dodge Greenlee, and one of them showed Pibby messing around with the progress bar in a video to be able to distort time and such. Like, there's things like this that show how wild the show can get if it's allowed to be as creative as it can be. It's a concept that can grab anyone to watch it. With something dealing with all these grand IPs, I always thought learning Pibby to be like a mini-series. Something like this doesn't need to overstay its welcome and become this full-on five-season epic. It just needs to get in and get out. Five to six episodes probably at most. I'm looking at it as this big crossover event for Cartoon Network because it pretty much is. I remember when we used to get full-on events for cartoons growing up? This could be that, but in today's age. It makes it feel like it has this level of importance to treat it like an event and a full-on show. Like, oh man, it's just one of those things you had to be there for, bro. Because if something like this that goes on for seasons and seasons, the problems will start to show itself and no one wants people to fumble. I don't think people, myself included, can take that kind of pressure on their heart, honestly. I also just miss a Vespa cartoons. We don't really get that anymore with how streaming is and the culture of cartoons being different, but back in the olden day, it used to be cool as fuck to come home and see, oh, the special movie event for Codename Kids Next Door is gonna happen, so in preparation for it, three day marathon leading up to it. Listen, if they really wanna maximize the nostalgia, go full force with it and pull something like that. It's something to think of. But a mini series is the best and overall safest bet for learning with Pivi. The novelty won't wear itself thin if it's condensed and short within a few set of episodes. Some things just don't need to run the full gauntlet of being a long syndicated series. Also to avoid milking the content as well. Because yes, while everyone and their mother loves Pippi, the last thing you want to do is overinflate it so by feeding the need of it being longer than it needs to be. Of course, you realistically could prolong the show to run for as long as the studio might need it to, but it would get really old really fast because it would run itself into problems that befall multiverse stories and its issues that it can very easily avoid if it just keeps itself condensed. 
Learn him and Pippi has the ability to usher in a new star within the realm of cartoons that lives alongside the old greats. It's screaming with potential and it's up to anyone at Adult Swim to pull the trigger on it. I was meaning to talk about Pippi for a mean minute now and I finally got around to it. Everyone else has something to say on the old YouTube so I felt like I had to say something. Pippi's our internet darling until it can become a TV darling and everyone's waiting with bated breath to see it become what it needs to be. It's been two years now and the spirit of Pippi's still going strong. If there's one thing the internet is the king of besides being petty as fuck is that it never forgets when they have their eye on something, especially when it comes to the realm of animation. They'll hold on to it forever and because of how Pippi is and the subcultures it's referencing, the internet will keep the discourse fully alive and well for it and I'll be here for it. But that's the end of the video. What do you guys think? Do you want to see more Pibby? Are you content with it just being a proof of concept? Do you, do you hate the fandom surrounding it? Let me know down in the comments and I'll be seeing you all next time.